guys, so this video log is about the four worldviews of Cresswell and also um, how that relates to our new student dialogues and a possible two possible problems which create a framework for a possible research study for next semester. So first is uh, the of the four worldviews, which do I feel resonates the most with me? Um, the four views are post-positivist, constructivist, pragmatism, and advocacy. Um, and I really resonate with constructivist, but um, it's really toned in a social research sense. So um, the post-positivist one is much more like quantitative and measurement and figures and data and everything and that really resonates with me during my science research work um, because you know feelings and the biases of the facilitator and experiences don't really play into science research so um, that's a little different but with social research and all of the all of the work that I've done as a PDF um, I definitely think constructivism is the approach that I fit with because I think that uh, fundamentally understanding people and understanding people's differences and experiences is really important and very useful and I think that the social research ideas that I've heard and the research that we've tried and the research that I know Re Lisa's doing um, will fundamentally change the work that we do because there are all these questions that can be asked about something that you're implementing and if you don't ask them and then find the answers there's no way to improve there's no way to make it better and to um, get around obstacles and you know fix problems or issues so I think that um, constructivism fits well with me and I think that social research is important um, I also think that with social research. <clears throat> I think advocacy is also important. Um, many problems that we have, there's some sort of solution that come that can come out of it and sometimes all someone needs is a call to action. However, um, I, the, I, I don't think that every single problem <clears throat> has some sort of advocacy angle. I think sometimes you just need research for information and um, to improve something rather than change something entirely. Um, so I think that advocacy has a time and place, but fundamentally constructivism seems more important to me and more underlying to all types of research to me. Um, and uh, post-positivism and pragmatism, um, I think that they, ha they have a time and place also. I think that they are important. I think it just requires a different approach to the research, but um, for me, constructivism seems to be the most comfortable, just dealing with people and interacting and uh, fully understanding, but um, I also think that post-positivism and pragmatism will work. They just don't come as naturally to me, I guess. Um, so that is my thoughts on Creswell's worldviews. Um, Next, I'll just talk a little bit about um, our new student dialogues and um, what topics we are doing in the new student dialogues and how that relates to a research question. So, um, I liked the activity that we did in class the other day with everybody just sort of writing a, a question or two questions that we have about dialogue because I thought. There were some people, you know, there were some questions that weren't as deep as others, but there were some that were really fascinating. And um, in particular, I thought that Kiera's were really spot on, like questions that I never thought that I had, but really did have. And I also loved Julie's question about vulnerability and how that, you know, specifically relates to her dialogue. But I just think that, you know, vulnerability is universal and it is present in all our dialogues. So I thought that their questions were really awesome. Um, and there were other questions that I thought were really awesome, but specifically theirs. And so um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. But one of Kira's questions was related to facilitators' identities and how that affects the dialogue. 
and um, whether that's beneficial or or whether that can be beneficial or negative and how to plan for that and I just thought that was a fantastic question because last week excuse me last week we talked about um, like power dynamics between facilitators and um, privileged identities that just naturally take a step forward and like take the lead and um, I thought that was really really interesting and I never really thought last year while I was facilitating dialogues about how the facilitators made a difference because the two people that I facilitated with shared many my many of my identities um, I was partnered with Susanna and Marie and both all three of us are white females um, and we talked in my socioeconomic status dialogue with Susanna, we never talked about so, um, sexual orientation. In my one with Marie, we did, but the topic was about that. And I don't think that that power dynamic ever came into play in either of the dialogues because in my one with socioeconomic status, it never came up. And in my LGBT one with Marie, it was like two sides of the of the issue. So it never felt like there was a... Um, negative power dynamic on me. It always just sort of felt like giving my experiences and advocating for one side of the issue that we were talking about. But with that being said, I definitely recognize that there are power dynamics between facilitators and I'm already feeling that this year a little bit with Andy specifically because there's an age difference and an education difference as well as he's male and I'm female. And, um, and I definitely notice a power dynamic there we brought up the example, and I've seen this in class, and I noticed it a lot more at the beginning of this semester, of last semester with the group just coming together, but there was definitely a power dynamic between race and sex in our PDF group. So just recognizing that and seeing that a lot more with this cohort, I think that the identities of the facilitators definitely have an effect on the dialogue, and I think that it's a really fascinating thing to look at. Um, so that was actually the one that my little group decided to start writing a purpose statement for because I really think that would be an awesome thing for us to research. My other problem slash research question that I'll throw out there is um, centered around uh, these very specific dialogues and these very specific dialogue topics. So we cover all social identities pretty much. And um, I think that we do a good job of creating a sp safe space in many cases. I think the group norms are really important and defining what dialogue is really important what dialogue is, is very important. Um, but I just wonder, I, I don't see a problem necessarily, but I just wonder if there should be a more specific approach to creating this safe space. And if that means in addition to group norms and debate discussion dialogue or a different method of, of doing those two activities and maybe even having the icebreaker tie into this, preparing the safe space and creating the safe space idea, if like, for instance, different dialogue topics surrounded around different social identities require a little bit more or a little bit less or just a little bit different approach to creating this safe space. I just think that's an interesting idea and um, I think the facilitators have a huge role in that. You know, for instance, um, if we were doing race dialogue, I think that having a, a co-facilitator that identifies with a minority race and with a majority race would have a huge impact on the safe space for minority students and majority stu students in the dialogue. So, I mean, that's a part of creating the safe space. And then I wonder if there's any other piece to creating that safe space for each specific identity. So those are two questions that I wanted to propose. Sorry, this video log was really long. I didn't even realize I was rambling so much. Um, but looking forward to the research and to class this week.